our last story for the evening is going to go. Uh, it's a little tiny bit lib crack as well. Uh, it is uh, Senator John Kerry. Hey, we're going to go to the New York Post, actually, uh, exactly. to find out about this. So Get Senator John Kerry Post. is in trouble for some things he said to the Iranian government, possibly. He got loose lips. All right. So John Kerry's loose lips and other commentary. Uh, buried fairly deep in the New York Times story about a leaked tape is news that former Secretary of State John Kerry informed Javad Zarif, Iran's foreign minister, that Israel had attacked Iranian interests in Syria at least 200 times. Uh, was it official U.S. policy to inform the Iranian government, most certainly not an ally, about the covert military actions of the Israeli government, most certainly an ally, Terhuan possibly suspected the Israelis anyway? Still, just what was the objective of telling the Iranian government this? So there was a, a leaked tape in which John Kerry, it sounds to me like John Kerry was really trying to make this deal with the Iranians. Yeah. And he threw the Israelis under the bus a little bit, which is something you might want to do in a negotiation like that. Uh, but it's it has a cost. And it's been revealed that he was telling things to the Iranians who officially are supposed to be our enemy, something about the Israelis who are our number one ally in the region. You know, whatever you think about Israel, they are our number one ally in the region, um, which is interesting because Human Rights Watch this week uh, just put out a uh, statement uh, accusing our biggest ally in the region of being an apartheid state. Well, global rights group accuses Israel of apartheid persecution. <clears throat> One of the world's best known human rights groups said Tuesday that Israel is guilty of international crimes of apartheid and persecution because of discriminatory policies toward Palestinians within its own border and in the occupied territories. Now I want to be clear, just as with Venezuela, we are Americans who do not understand what is going on in Israel as well as people who live there. We're yes. non-interventionists here on this podcast, so we are not going to uh, pretend like we're experts on Israel. Uh, but it's interesting that the a 213-page report from Human Rights Watch uh, came out this same week condemning Israel for its treatment of the Palestinians. And that's our number one ally in the region. And now Senator Kerry has been accused of leaking strategic information that would help the Iranians get one over on the Israelis. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a leaked tape. So I guess he quite literally definitely did this. Um, can you look up real quick what Kerry's position in the Biden administration is right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like special counsel. Uh, John Forbes Kerry. Jesus, he's related to both the Forbes and the Heinzes. Anyway. Well, he married the Heinzes. Yeah. Well, yeah, so his kids are. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, he's an American politician and diplomat, currently serving as the first United States special presidential envoy for climate. Yeah. So a senator from Alaska has called for John Kerry to resign. <laughs> Uh, Senator Dan Sullivan said, I don't do this lightly. Yeah, right. In my entire time in the Senate, I've never called for anyone's resignation, but his record, John Kerry's record of undermining working families and working against American national security interests was too much to bear. He needs to go. Um, Kerry says the allegations are unequivocally false. This never happened. Which it definitely uh, did because he's recorded. So, yeah. Uh, Nikki Haley called it disgusting. <laughs> Gosh, these people, they love them some Israel. Um, you know, I mean. I feel like no one's on Twitter more than politicians. I feel like Twitter's just like a political and angry cesspool at this point. No one like shares what they used to in like the 140 yeah. characters. Like just did this or like go check this out. They're like, yeah. did you know that this is ruining your life right now? And you're like, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't personally care that much, but it's an interesting thing. Obviously, the Secretary of State 
should not be helping a a country perceived as an enemy get one over in a country that's supposed to be our ally. And I mean, you know, but like, I don't personally care that much because like, I think really we should be friends with, I think we should be friends with Iran. And I think Israel needs to change some things. Uh, But Joe, the Biden administration is actually uh, extremely pro-Israel. And Joe Biden has always been seen as an extremely pro-Israel guy, more so than Barack Obama Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even more so than Donald Trump. And just the fact that Biden has been in the Senate for so long and has been such a steadfast ally to Israel and Kerry has as well. I mean, all these guys are super pro-Israel. There's a bipartisan consensus that Israel, you know, should get whatever it wants because it is a strategic ally of ours in the region. And we need them to have this strong, you know, uh, air force and all that stuff to help us out so that we can run around the region and, and, and do the colonization, everything. And so surprise, surprise, Israel is doing its own colonization, (laughs) you know, like we shouldn't be surprised about that. Um, but, uh, the Jerusalem post, uh, went out of its way to, uh, try to throw water on this uh, because they do love Biden. Um, Netanyahu, who was, uh, you know, standing next to Trump, a month. He was the, one of the first leaders to come to the White House to visit with Trump, was also one of the first leaders to congratulate Joe Biden on his election win. And that should show you something about how much um, Netanyahu, how strongly Netanyahu feels about Biden. He likes Biden. Uh, so the Jerusalem Post, uh, interestingly, has gone out of its way to throw water on this. Give John Kerry a break this time. Zarif is the problem analysis says. And that makes sense because the, the Iranian government does shoot its mouth off a lot. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of interesting that the Republicans are are taking the word of, you know, the Iranians. The people who keep saying, by the way, in every Twitter post, they need you to know that Iran is the number one state sponsor of terrorism, even though like, come on, look at us. But anyway, right. they every single Twitter post, it's uh, Iran, which, as you know, is like the most terrifying terrorist place in the world. And they're trusting them over yeah. uh, us. I mean, look at this. Look at this sub sub line here. There are real reasons to criticize Kerry, such as failing to predict the Abraham Accords, which was Trump's uh, big diplomatic breakthrough and backing the Iran deal. So this is an anti-Iran deal um, magazine or post. Uh, but they still came to the aid of, of John Kerry. So I think this is going to be. Uh, I think this is probably going to go away quickly. Um, and I think people are going to move on. And the last thing I want to say about John Kerry is that guy's face looks like it's melting off. He has had more plastic surgery. He does not even look like himself anymore. And uh, it's pretty, pretty gross looking at him. Anyway, I maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but it's just the truth. He looks terrible. <laughs>